There's a song by Bruce Springsteen where he sings about a Cadillac gleaming in the sun. I find myself humming that ditty every time I look at the Road Glide Custom. Almost in spite of this unit's matte black denim paint, it surely does gleam and sparkle in the sun. There's also something classic American about its shark fairing and slammed hot rod rear end. Like it invites you to pump a bunch of the boss's MP3s into the integrated Harman Kardon stereo and point it at the horizon. Yes, it has a nice stereo mounted in the dash slash wraparound fairing, along with an array of stylish gauges, two glove boxes, and for the first time that I've ever encountered it on a motorcycle, a cigarette lighter. There is no ashtray, however. I'm guessing in this enlightened age, its primary aspect is an auxiliary power outlet, but if you do fancy a Gasper on the go, it will spark up. The fairing is one of those features that will polarise opinion on the road glide. My friend Mark says the twin headlight front reminds him of a 70s Holden Premier, but I'm staying with that caddy theme. When I first picked the bike up, it was fitted with an aftermarket tall windscreen, which would work well for a rider up to about six foot tall, putting him in a well-protected pocket of clean air but it caused the turbulence to smack me right between the eyes. So I reverted to the standard smoked shorty screen and it was quite comfortable with the dirty air hitting me below face level. The rest of the bike I found was very comfortable right out of the box. As usual, the co-pilot would need some sort of backrest to go for extended rides on the pillion accommodation due to its rearward slope, but it was fine for a short stint. Up front, however, the ergos were all day riding good Wide bars, sculpted saddle, and roomy foot accommodations mean that you can wring every drop out of the 22.7 litre tank before needing a stop. Harley claims a respectable 5.6 litres per 100 kilometres. Harley called the bike the Tourer's Tourer in their marketing material. At that end, the model certainly has plenty of runs on the board, or chrome finish footboards in this case. According to Wiki, the first FLT, the Tour Glide, was introduced in 1979 and gave us the radical geometry setup that sees the forks mounted behind the steering head to accommodate the weight of the fixed fairing. The FLTR Road Glide was introduced in the States in 1998 but only now makes its debut in the New Zealand market for the 2012 model year. What I did find very noticeable about the Road Glide is that Harley seems to have coaxed more low down torque from the 103 cubic inch engine. It produces a claimed 134 newton meters at 3,500 RPM but this unit will trundle along quite satisfactorily in sixth gear at 60 kilometers an hour, without any sign of lugging, even below those revs. I use top gear far more often on this bike than on any previous big block I've tested. The air-cooled twin cam now has an integrated oil cooler, but it is still pushrod operated, with self-adjusting lifters operating two valves per cylinder. Those that moan outdated technology probably haven't lived with how cheap it is to service and maintain, or just how nice these old school engines actually feel and sound. The bore and stroke are 98.4 millimeters by 111.1 millimeters for an overall displacement of 1,690 cc's and a compression ratio of 9.6 to one fed by electronic sequential port fuel injection. Finished in black with copious amounts of traditional chrome, it's a great looking engine too, but more importantly, like all the modern Harleys I've ridden lately, any engine vibration evident sitting at the traffic lights soon disappears when it's up to cruising speed. This current incarnation becomes remarkably smooth. It could almost be described as vibration free. You actually have to feel for any vibes when moving. And what you get is probably better described as a pulse from the motor. The rubber mounted engine smoothness is further helped by the six speed cruise drive transmission, 
that Harley says isolates the drivetrain. It is a sure shifting and very positive gearbox. Even easy to select neutral when stationary. A far cry from some of the cantankerous units I was testing 10 years ago. This one really is quite faultless. For such a big unit, weighing in at 376 kilograms, it really is very easy to ride too. Manhandling it around for a stationary photo shoot needed a bit of putting back into it. But once mobile, it's relatively low centre of mass and the balance of the touring chassis make it quite easy and pleasurable to punt around. Cornering clearances are good for a Harley at 32 and 29 degrees. Helped up front by the 18 inch front wheel and probably hindered a little by the 16 inch and the slammed rear end. The price of that slamming is that the air adjustable rear suspension is firm and offers 51 millimeters of travel. But then it does look rather PHAT fat. The rear rubber is an overly FAT fat though. The 16 inch is fitted with a real worldly 180 section tire and unlike some of the super wide combos, doesn't fight with the rear end. It just follows the well sorted front end, 41.3 millimeter telescopic forks with 117 millimeters of travel around very nicely. If anyone gives you that Harleys don't handle malarkey, invite them to book a test ride on a road glide. For a super heavyweight tourer, it's a very well mounted motorcycle. I did a couple of 350 kilometer days in the saddle and enjoyed every minute of it. Scraping the footboards every now and then doesn't equal bad handling. Brembo's all round, with Harley's own ABS fitted as standard in the local market. In the context of a 367 kilogram dry weight bike, they are very good brakes, another myth busted. It's one of those Harleys that can do two jobs quite well. It works as a long distance tourer, but is also quite effective as a head turning show bike. It has real road presence, in town or out on the highway. At 2,475 millimetres, it's a long bike, although the 1,630 millimetre wheelbase is only 5 millimetres longer than the similar street glide we tested in March 2011 Kiwi Rider. In many ways, it is the street glide, with the fairing fixed to the frame, rather than the handle bar mounted batwing unit on the other FLH touring rigs. The extra 12 kilograms the road glide weighs in at is mostly comprised of the extra payload up front, but then you get glove boxes and a cigarette lighter with the road glide too. The hard bags are quite roomy and once mastered the lids are quite easy to use. They do take a day of what the, but once you get the hang of them, the access is easy. They are lockable and the hardware is all colour coded. They also have a type of ring fastener on the inside for quick removal and converting back to a city cruiser mode. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the Road Glide and all its nice touches. The self-cancelling indicators, its good lighting, the great looking dashboard, styly wheels, and I harboured a deep down desire to put a foxtail on the radio aerial. I liked it, 
and it made me feel good riding around town, and I equally liked riding it on the freeway or the hilly backcountry twisties. I really do think it chucks around nicely, without tempting me into the licensed disqualification zone. In that Springsteen song, he also talks about opening up your engines and letting them roar. Works for me, 